Imagine this. A hundred runners with various skill levels must run a marathon. The top a third of runners, or around 33 runners, get free Russell House Chick-fil-A for life, while the bottom two thirds, or 67, get nothing. Each competitor gets two water bottles to compete in the competition. The top runners only need one water bottle to, uh, to finish the race, while the bottom need a minimum of four water bottles. Therefore, it is physically possible for the top runners to finish the race if they only need one or maybe two water bottles if they need it, whereas the bottom competitors have no chance of finishing the race. Should the top competitors give up their potentially extra water bottles to the bottom competitors so that they have a chance to win, or should they just keep them and ensure free Chick-fil-A for life? Garrett Hardin and Michael Patton would argue that the top runners should not give their water bottles to the bottom runners so as to secure a victory and free Chick-fil-A for life. This hypothetical also somewhat parallels the world today as around a third of people in the world are considered rich while the other two thirds lives in extreme poverty. Hi, my name is Matthew Ventola and this is Garrett Hardin and Michael Patton, the case against helping the poor. In this argument, Hardin and Patton argue that not giving to famine relief organizations is positive and saves more lives by preventing overpopulation. During this presentation, I will inform you guys of Garrett Hardin's arguments uh, against helping the poor by discussing lifeboat ethics, the tragedy of the commons, and the ratchet effect. Additionally, I will talk about Michael Patton's game preserve argument, which shares similar sentiments to uh, Hardin's. Firstly, I'll start by explaining Garrett Hardin's lifeboat ethics and why it shows that we should not help the poor uh, by giving to famine relief organizations. So this argument kind of hinges on a hypothetical scenario. So imagine that there's tons of people just drowning in the ocean and there's only a set amount of lifeboats to save them. Um, you're on a lifeboat and it has 60 seats, but only 50 of them are filled. So you theoretically have 10 seats remaining. And Hardin says that there are three options that we can do. We can choose option one, which is saving everyone possible. We can choose option two, which is uh, saving 10 people to increase the lifeboat to the maximum capacity. Or we can choose option three, which is saving no one. So I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone agrees that we shouldn't choose option one, which is saving everyone possible because you would just save way too many people. The lifeboat would be way over maximum capacity and it would sink just like the rest, um, which would uh, kill many people. Um, now the issue is option two and option three. Should we save 10 more people so that the lifeboat uh, reaches maximum capacity or should we save no one? And Hardin argues that we should save no one because of the safety net or safety factor as he calls it. So if we save 10 people and the lifeboat gets to maximum capacity, theoretically it will not sink. But if any other factor goes wrong, then the lifeboat will sink and everyone's lives will be lost. Whereas if we don't save anyone, there's still 50 lives on the lifeboat and there's a very, very high probability of you know, being saved and preserving everyone's life. So Hardin argues, um, or Hardin parallels this to uh, donating to famine relief organizations, or I guess lack thereof. Um, because uh, donating to famine relief organizations is similar to options one or two, which he says is unfavorable. Next, I will cover Hardin's tragedy of the commons argument, which argues that overpopulation leads to erosion, and this does more harm than good. So it's another hypothetical scenario that deals with cows in a pasture. So imagine that there's a pasture and a dozen cows are comfortably living there, and any herdsman can use the past or the pasture for free. Um, so it's basically a free market competition. Um, naturally, humans will want to maximize the profit of the pasture by putting as many cows as possible in the pasture, which will maximize profit for an amount of time. 
but over time this overpopulation and like over optimization of the space will lead to erosion and lead to more harm than good so this kind of parallels uh the fa the famine relief organization's argument because giving i'll talk about it more in the next effect which is the ratchet effect but basically giving uh, money to uh, these impoverished countries so that people continue to have food leads to overpopulation over time. So giving to people, uh, giving food to impoverished countries is positive at first, but over time it'll lead to overpopulation and more suffering and death than if we just did nothing. So the last Garrett Hardin argument I'm going to cover is the ratchet effect which states that we shouldn't give money to famine relief organizations because it will save more lives. And he kind of uses two uh, population charts to show the difference between the natural fluctuation of a population and then the fluctuation of a population that's being like aided by the World Food Bank and other famine relief organizations. So I'm gonna provide these two charts as I talk about both of them. But basically, a natural population reaches um, its carrying capacity where there's no more safety net or safety factor, which is the same idea that I mentioned in the lifeboat ethics argument. And when this happens, there will be some human suffering and human death, but eventually the population will regress and get back to you know, a healthy level where it should be. And Hardin argues that this is better than the other option, which is a population that's being supplemented by funds from the World Food Bank and other organizations, because these uh, populations will reach the safety net or the safety factor. But then instead of people dying and people suffering, um, there will be money provided by these organizations to the country. And then the, these people will not die, they will reproduce and then the next generation will be even more people and it'll be an even bigger emergency. And if we keep giving to these countries, then this cycle will just continue over many generations and lead to maximum crisis, maximum human suffering and maximum death. So um, that is Garrett Hardin's ratchet effect. So the last argument I'm gonna cover is Michael Patton's game preserve argument which is definitely a lot more radical than uh, Garrett Hardin's arguments that I've already talked about, which are already very conservative leaning. So Patton believes that we should employ tactics that are similar to what occurs on an animal game preserve when there's overpopulation. So if you're not, fami if you're not familiar with that, um, if there's overpopulation on a game preserve, increased hunting occurs so that the population can go back to a normal level. So Patton is suggesting that we start hunting companies to hunt and kill these impoverished people until the population returns to a normal level. And this will sound crazy to pretty much everyone. It sounded crazy to me. Um, his uh, defense of this is by creating safaris to hunt poor people, the economies of these third world countries will be helped People who will have more fun hunting and the populations will suffer less than before because again, it will have a similar effect as the ratchet effect, um, the first one that Hardin believes is very positive uh, when nothing is done. So uh, Patton just believes that we could replace nothing with hunting. So that's Michael Patton's game preserve argument. In conclusion, I have discussed four viewpoints that are um, presented by Garrett Hardin and Michael Patton regarding uh, giving to the poor, and they believe that we should not give to the poor um, and not give to famine relief organizations. Uh, Garrett Hardin argues with three main arguments, which are his lifeboat ethics argument, his tragedy of the commons, and the ratchet effect, whereas Michael Patton goes with a more uh, a much more radical argument with his game preserve argument. 
So I would just like everyone who has watched this video to really take a deep dive into themselves and implore if they agree, if they disagree, if they feel neutral, just um, please reflect and really decide what you believe on this issue. Thank you for listening and have a great day.